We have the head. A lot of people make soup out of the head. In one of my previous videos, we steamed the head and we made tostadas out of it. So what I want to point out on the head is how much meat is tucked away here that comes down the skull on either side, there and there. Then you have the entire cheek and there's even a little bit of meat underneath here. So what we're going to do is also steam this head and pick the meat and do something with it. What is going on guys? Earlier today we cooked the ribs from that black grouper. That was in the first episode, and now this episode of Cooking with Clams, we are cooking the head from the black grouper. So if you're following along in this series, we're doing four episodes making four meals with the carcass of a black grouper that my friend Aaron shot. He took the fillets, I took all of the scraps. Now today, what I'm going to make with the head is a tomatillo salsa verde black grouper head enchilada. I'll try to say that three times fast. A tomatillo salsa verde black grouper head, enchiladas. Let's go inside and cook them up. We're gonna bake our grouper head at 350 degrees, probably for about 20, 25 minutes. Uh, so one of the things is that it still has the skin on so we can't get to the meat and the cheeks. I don't wanna start putting slices in it. So the only part that I'm really gonna season is the back of the head here. And this is just fajita seasoning. So one of the things that I appreciate about the way that Aaron fishes and the way that I've been taught to fish as far as spear fishing goes is that you can become very selective. I've been with Aaron on a couple of trips where we'll go to a rock and these guys hide in the rocks and there's been two or three grouper inside the rocks and Aaron will pick out which one he wants, shoot that one and that's what we take for the day. You don't have to go overboard and then again just to show you he took the fillets off that fish and I took all the scraps. And we're getting a few meals out of this. So one fish is really all you need. And we've been feeding a lot of people off of the scraps of this one fish. So press that down. And we're going into the oven. Now, I also have a couple of the pin bones that he cut out. But these are going to cook really quick. So I'm going to add them to the pan probably in the last like seven minutes that this is cooking. We'll add those in. Now we're going to start our tomatillo sauce. So we're going to chop everything up and we start with our tomatillos. Now a lot of people think that that is a green tomato. It is not. It is a completely different animal. Uh, it's closer to a gooseberry if anyone knows what a gooseberry is. But as you see very different than a tomato. They have a really tart, citrusy flavor. And you bake them down, and then we throw them in the blender to make our sauce. And one Spanish onion. And all of this can be rough chopped. It doesn't have to be finely chopped because it's all getting roasted in the oven and then put into a blender. Now, while I'm chopping this, I actually want to add, if you see the knife that I'm using here, Meeson. This company sent me a couple of things, and in the next episode, I have a giveaway as a thank you to you guys. 
So that's going to be at the end of the next episode, and I'll tell you how to win something from Meeson. Now we're going to add in about six, seven garlic cloves. And these, I'm just going to smash them, peel them, throw them in. Two jalapeno. Now again, if you're not a spicy person, you can omit the jalapeno. If you're a very spicy person, you could add more jalapeno. And I always like to check to see how spicy they are. That's a spicy one. <laughs> I might only do one jalapeno. That one's pretty fire. And for right now, some scallion. Now I'm going to save some of the scallion for after. We're going to put it in fresh in the blender after everything roasts. And we're going to do the same thing with our cilantro. But what I will take right now is the stems off the bottom of the cilantro. And then we're going to add the fresh leaves later. Now, garlic salt, pepper, olive oil, this is going into the oven, and the same thing, what you want to do is watch this, and in about 15-20 minutes, you're going to take it out and check it, and you want to make sure that when you press down on the tomatillos, they just squish completely squish, almost like a cooked tomato. Um, and that way you know they're soft enough that then you can throw them in the blender and you won't have any chunks and you'll have a bit of a smoother sauce. Uh, same thing with the onions. Just check them in about 20 minutes and make sure that you can put a spoon through them. Our grouper head is ready to come out. And that strip there is the uh, pin bones that came out. So now I'm gonna wait for that to cool down before I go picking, because I've done that before, and that's a good way to burn your fingertips. So we're gonna let that cool down a little bit, peel the skin back, and then pull all the meat out of that head. The other thing that I've done to get going is right here, I have my corn tortillas steaming so that they're ready to go, so that I can roll my grouper meat in them to put in the pan. All right, so now that we're a little bit cooled down, we're going to peel the skin back. And what that is going to expose is all of this meat right here. Watch this. Look at that. So all of that would have been tossed or, you know, a lot of people make soup out of the heads, but this meat to me is too good for soup. And underneath here is one of the most delicious pieces of meat. That is the grouper cheek. Look at that. I think we gotta eat a piece of that. It is silky. Oh, it is delicious. So again, these cuts are not gonna overcook, or I should say you could overcook them, but you're gonna have a hard time because they're encapsulated by fat, cartilage, and bone. And that is just, as it's baking, gonna keep moisture in the meat. So that's why I love cooking these pieces. All right, I'm gonna continue pulling all the meat out of this, and then we'll get back to our tomatillo sauce. So I know this is a little bit gruesome looking, but I pulled all the meat off of the head, and now I wanna show you this. In the bottom jaw, up against the jaw, Look at the amount of meat that's going to come off of here. 
So even tucked away in that jaw is meat. All in this head is basically this entire bowl filled. Our tomatillos are ready and roasted. And I'm gonna show you what I mean. I'll do it with a fork rather than a spoon. But what it's called is fork tender. What it is is when you take the fork, you can split it easily with the fork. So this piece of garlic, split easily with the fork. So we are ready. So now we're gonna add our fresh scallions that I put aside. And a bunch of our fresh cilantro and the juice from two limes and I always add the lime at the end because I don't want it to cook off. I want it to be really prominent in the salsa. Now we want to taste it to see if we have to add any more salt, pepper, lime, but nope, it doesn't need anything. That is so good. That is one of my favorite sauces. It's so easy to make and it's just bright, absolutely bright from the tomatillo and the lime. It's tart, limey, but then when you roast it, you get a little bit of an earthy flavor. It's, to me, one of the most perfect sauces. If it's well balanced, you can't beat this. So now we're gonna assemble, assemble our enchiladas. Hang on one second. So the first thing I wanna do, take a spoonful of our tomatillo, and just put it in the bottom of the pan. It doesn't have to be a lot, just enough so that our tortillas don't stick. Then our tortillas that are steaming, take one. Oh, found a bone. Someone wasn't doing their job. It was me. <laughs> <laughs> Roll it up and into the pan. And now I'm gonna make about 10 of these, fill the pan. So now that I have them all rolled and put in my pan, we add our sauce to the top. And I've asked before to mention below, flour tortilla or corn tortilla? I am team corn all day long. I don't know where flour tortilla belongs, but corn tortillas belong here. So you mentioned below which one you're into. And here's another question for you. So in my family, we're Sicilian and Italian. Cheese does not go on fish, ever. I put cheese on a Wahoo burger and got a phone call from my uncle almost immediately asking me why I did such a thing. So again, sorry Uncle Joe, we're putting cheese on these, they're enchiladas. But comment below, does cheese and fish go together or not? I, this might be a sign that cheese doesn't go on them because it won't open. <laughs> okay, and this is going into the broiler just until the cheese is melted because that fish is cooked. We don't want to cook it anymore. So this is going to go in for about five minutes just to melt that cheese. Our cheese is melted. Oh. Now just so you know, these two on the end are for someone that don't eat cheese. Not because 
I'm succumbing to the no cheese on fish rule. I want cheese on fish. I know you want cheese. <laughs> also, a little bit of white onion on top. We'll start you with two. <laughs> <laughs> so good. All right. All right. Woo. Okay. It's going to be hot. Well, so <laughs> I, I know you. you're from Texas, but jeez. <laughs> okay, here we go. So good. <laughs> that um, the tomatillo sauce hits it on the head for sure. So Madeline exclaimed, "She's from Texas, so she knows what enchiladas should taste like." I am a professional. <laughs> so <laughs> it's an A plus. <laughs> All right. So this is this is the second episode of our grouper scraps series. And like I said, we're doing a giveaway in the next episode at the end of the episode. So make sure to tune in to all four. If you like this episode, hit like, hit subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. <laughs> <laughs>